In a lot of my renders, you'll probably notice I have a dark foreground that leads into a very bright environment. In this video, I wanted to talk about how I achieved this look in my environments to create more depth and focus to my renders. This is a very quick and easy method, and I use this all the time in my work, and I feel like it looks great. So the basic idea is you take a cube with the front face deleted and you surround the foreground and the camera. This will block all ambient light from behind the camera as well as let you absorb a lot of light as well. This will give you a lot of control over exactly how dark the foreground is without having to actually add a whole forest behind your camera. So I'll show you exactly how this works. All right, so here's a project I finished last night with the light absorption cube removed. Here's actually the final version of the render right here. I actually made this entirely using assets included in my new course, but more on that later. As you can see, at the moment, the foreground is pretty light and kind of lacks a lot of depth and focus that the final version has. So I'm gonna start by adding in a cube. So I'm gonna make sure my 3D cursor is in the foreground. So I'm gonna do shift right click and just click right here. So my 3D cursor is where I want it to be in the foreground. I'm gonna do shift A, mesh, add in a cube. And essentially I just wanna scale up this cube to contain the foreground and the camera. So I'm just gonna click S and scale this up. Okay, and I'm just gonna move that up just a little bit as well. So I want to go into edit mode. So I'm going to click tab to go into edit mode. I'm going to make sure I'm in face selection and I'm just going to select this front face right here. So I'm going to click X to delete this face and now I'll be able to see outside of this cube. I'm going to click tab to make sure I'm back in object mode and I basically just want to rotate this cube so that I don't actually see it in the camera view. So I'm going to go into top down view and just kind of rotate this until it's about the same angle of the camera. And now you're already starting to see this cube is starting to take effect. So basically now it's starting to look like you're walking out of a deep forest into a bright new environment. It's just that this effect is kind of too strong for at least my liking. Generally how I determine the positioning of this cube is I don't want to actually see the hard cut, you know, shadows from the cube itself. As you can see right here, you can see the shadow that the cube is creating. I generally want to pull this back until about, let's see, somewhere around here. So like, you're not actually seeing any shadow from the cube itself, but you're still getting that blocked light in that darkened foreground from the light absorption. So as you can see without it, and then with it, so you don't actually see any of those new shadows from the cube. It's just darkening the foreground a bit. So I also have this on local. So if you change it from global to local, you can move it exactly the same direction this object is facing. So that's how I'm moving it back and forth this way. And this is basically all up to preference. Um, how I place this kind of determines on the scene and kind of just what looks best. Sometimes I want a very dark foreground. Sometimes I want a somewhat dark foreground. So basically if I want it to be a little bit brighter, I'll just kind of pull this back a little bit and just kind of get rid of some of those kind of darker shadows. And you can see it's still a little bit darker, but it's not quite as strong of an effect. So one quick tip for convenience is set this cube to be displayed as bounds because as you can see right here, there's a cube just kind of blocking the view of the foreground. So if you want to actually like add detail to the foreground, you're going to have to kind of, you know, come inside of here and work within this box. So to do this, you can just click the cube. So select the cube, go to object properties and scroll down to viewport display. Set display as from textured to bounds. And the effect will still show in cycles, but in the viewport, it's just going to show up as a wireframe cube. So now you can actually, you know, select objects, you can move objects and work within the foreground without having to go with inside of this box to see everything. So let me go out here as well. So let me take a look at this cube. So as you can see with the cube and then without the cube, there is a huge difference in the amount of light from behind the camera. And there's a few other things you can do too. So if you go in here into the material properties, you can click new and darker materials absorb more light than light materials. So if your foreground's still a bit too bright, you can click base color and darken the material. So if I go to pitch black, you're going to start to see it's much darker inside of here. And that is because black materials aren't going to be bouncing off as much light. So any light that comes in here is most likely just going to be absorbed by the cube as opposed to bouncing off the cube. If I have a white material, you're going to start seeing there's a lot more light bounce in here. So it is darker, but there still is a little bit of light kind of being reflected back onto the objects into the foreground. So determining on how bright you want this, you can position it farther back as well as change the material. And generally the darkness I like to use is kind of around this range right here. So probably about like 55% darkness to maybe like 75. Um, sometimes I go darker, sometimes I go lighter. Um, sometimes I don't even add a material at all. It just kind of depends on what kind of look you want in general. 
And another thing as well, so say you want to darken the foreground a bit, but this cube is just kind of blocking too much light. You can actually do the same thing with just a plane. So let me actually just go into edit mode and I'm just going to select this face and click control I to invert that selection. X, delete those faces. Okay, I'm gonna right click also and set origin to geometry. So I have this plane right here. So as you see, it makes a little bit of an effect right here, but let me move this closer to the camera and scale this up a bit. So I have this big plane right here. It's only blocking light from behind it and nothing from the side. And it still kind of looks like nothing is there. Um, it kind of looks like the image before I had the cube. Um, it might be a little bit darker. Yeah, so it is a little bit darker. But right now the base color is pure white. If I start darkening this, you can still absorb light as well. So if you want this effect, but you don't want to block any of the side lighting, you can still do this with just a plane and a plane will start absorbing a lot of that light and kind of darken the foreground. The effect just won't be as intense as if you're using a cube for this effect. So you can also use different colors to reflect light into your foreground as well. So if I put this to red, you're going to see these shadows start turning red as well. Same with like blue here. Let me also make the plane a bit bigger. So this should help as well. So if I go back to red, yeah. So you can start seeing some of these highlights and shadows are starting to change color as well. So you can use this in a lot of ways as well. I don't usually use color, but this is an option. So if you do want to like, you know, change the color of your highlights on the back of your objects, you can do it this way by reflecting light. So if you want blue shadows in here, you can do this and change it to blue and there'll be a bit more of a blue tint. Same with green and red or orange, which red and orange, that kind of range is the strongest in this scene as it seems. So yeah, this is what I use in basically all of my renders. It's extremely efficient and I don't think there's really a project that I don't use this on to at least some degree. Some I just use it less than others and some I use it very strongly. So just a side note, I mentioned earlier that this project was created entirely using assets from my new course. So I just launched a new course, which is a full step-by-step -step walkthrough taking you through the entire creation of this render from start to finish. It also comes with hundreds of assets that you can use in your own work, like the huge pack I made in collaboration with Max Hay, as well as my new fantasy tree pack, which was also used heavily in this project shown in this tutorial. There are tons more assets included and lots of things I'm not mentioning here. So if you want more info on that, I will link that down below. Anyway, that is all that I wanted to cover for this video. So hopefully it helped and thank you guys for watching.